Hey, y'all, I want to do a uh, quick intro, quick intro uh, before we uh, launch in today's episode. Um, first, a little bit about this episode. Colin and I had the opportunity to do a live stream with Bleacher Report. Uh, today's episode will be that. It'll be a um, it'll be that re-uploaded. Uh, they gave us some topics they wanted to talk about, um, and we were framing that episode a little more um, general audience, a little bit more casual audience than we normally would. So if you're looking for some nitty gritty, detailed, super nerdy Ohio state stuff, maybe, um, not going to be your episode. So, uh, they gave us topics. They wanted to ask, um, is, they, they wanted us to discuss is Ryan day on the hot seat. They wanted us to discuss, uh, which by the way, we immediately just said no to, um, and then we tried to sort of discuss why some people might feel that way. And, but you'll, 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 you'll see the episode. You'll see the episode. Um, second thing they wanted us to talk about was the quarterback competition. Now, if you've been watching the sloop cast all summer, you know, Kyle and I really don't think there's a lot to the quarterback competition. Uh, we, we definitely think it's, um, it, it, it's going to be, you know what, watch the episode, you'll figure it out. Um, so we kind of, we pivoted away from like is Ryan day on the hot seat to talking about why we think it's a silly conversation to say that he is on the hot seat. Uh, they wanted us to talk about the quarterback competition. We pivoted away from that pretty quickly as well. Cause we don't really think that's much of a discussion point. Uh, and, and, and then we basically went on to um, talk about our expectations for Kyle McCord this season. Um, and then it, a, uh, uh, past that, we started talking about like basically key players for the season. So, you know, it's who we think, you know, where, where we think the strengths of the team is, where we think the, the potential weaknesses of the team is, um, and just some notable playmakers. Um, and, and, and again, uh, this is aimed at a more general audience. So if you have, um, family, friend, uncle, brother, who is just like looking for an intro into the season from a more casual perspective, send them this episode. Send them this episode. Um, I, I think it'll be a good catch up, a good introduction into where uh, we expect Ohio State to be good and not good and all the preview stuff uh, heading into the season. So I think it would, it's, a, it's a great intro uh, for for the more casual fans, which I, I think is something that um, we and everyone else in the Ohio State sort of podcast sphere uh, don't always do a great job catering towards. So I, I think that's how we decided to approach this episode. Um, so I'm, we're going to go ahead and kick it over to that episode, and I'm going to do one more wrap around at the end of the show. Um, so. Once that episode is is all done, it's, I'm going to be back over here. Uh, so just uh, keep an eye out for me there. Uh, and I'm going to kick it over to myself, I guess. Anchors up. Sales at full. Uh, welcome to the Sloopcast, I guess. Or uh, welcome to this uh, Bleacher Report um, stream. We're doing an Ohio State preview. Um Hey, gangland. <laughs> Only saying hi to Kyle. Very typical. We're going to vamp here for a second. Let people let people roll into the stream. You know, I wish I, to go like back to like Twitch stuff. Kind of wish I had like a going live stream, uh, a going live page all of a sudden, but that's OK. We're figuring this out. Hey, gangland said hi to me, too. That's a first. <laughs> Will, if you're if you're still listening, which I know you are, uh, Gangland's one of our mods over in the Discord server. So if he says anything rowdy, it's OK. <laughs> <sighs> right. So, hey, hey, Jared, we got we're getting close We're we are. Well, we actually just found out just moments ago. We are. Don't do not do math. Today is the don't 28th do week. Don't do math. We're we're like nine, ten days away from uh from the the hotel infamous check -in? hotel check-in day. Uh the velvet rope, or should I say the scarlet rope? 
Uh, we have our favorites. Yeah, we, Gangland's one of our favorites. Uh, that's that's th these are facts. Um, so yeah, we're we're doing a bit of a uh, Ohio State preview here. Um, I, I I think what we're we're attempting to do um, in this episode is to. And I want to know, I just want everyone to know, I don't mean this derogatorily. Um, that's a great way to start this. Wow. But no, I'm just saying, like, I think this is a good catch up for casuals. Um, how is he on the hot seat? We will get there. I promise. Um, Middlebrook. Um, only idiots think he'll be fired. Um, hey, guys, we'll get there. I promise. Um, what we are, uh, I, I think what we're trying to do here is to do a bit of a preview for casuals. Um, this would, this would be a great stream, maybe something to send um, out to people who don't like maybe follow it every single day. Don't follow every single recruit, every single uh, camp update. So um, hot seat is a bit of a stretch. Will you're getting us in trouble with, 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 with the topics. Uh, you're, you're get you're you're digging us a hole, buddy. <laughs> Missed feel. Okay, you know what? Let's just get into it. Let's just get into it. Is Ryan Day on the hot seat? Um, let's see. Chest Rockwell says a missed field goal away from playing for a national title. Only dumbasses think he should be fired. Mister Rockwell, can I call you Mister Rockwell? I one hundred percent agree. I 100% agree with you. Um, and by the way, I'm actually going to take it a step further. Um, I, I don't think they were a missed field goal away from playing for the national title. I believe they were a missed field goal away from winning the national title. Um, why will he keep his job? Because he's unreal at his job. I, I, you know, I am appreciating the amount of Ryan Day love I am seeing in the chat. Why is this even being discussed? I'll tell you why. Because he's lost to Michigan twice in a row. And there is a small, small, but vocal portion of the fan base who uh, is, is not happy. You can't lose to Michigan at Ohio State. Um, Ryan Day is safe. I agree with you. Um, we are a pro- Ryan Day stream here. But the the chatter is out there. The chatter is out it is. there. I mean, I mean the, the when, when was the last are upset? When was the last time Ohio State lost two in a row to that team up north? It's it's been over it's been over 20 years. So I I can't blame for people wanting to question Ryan Day and like, oh, he's in the hot seat and all that, but but yeah, I I think everything you look at everything else that Ryan Day is doing here, look at the recruiting, outstanding job recruiting, bringing in great, great talent here. He's pretty much dominating vast majority of his games here. And like I see some people in the chat here, just a field goal away going to the national title there. I personally don't think he's in, in the hot seat now. What happens if he loses a third straight year to Michigan? Then we can start. Then we can start talking about Ryan Day being on the hot seat. But I think two in a row here. Mm, yeah, let's 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 pump the brakes for 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 another year, and then we can talk about we can talk about Ryan Day being on the hot seat. T. Dot Drilly says, "Bro can't beat Michigan. Fire that bum." See, there's at least some in here who who are that vocal, very vocal, but minority of people who believe that one more to um and he's and he's gone but let me, okay um i'm gonna call you gut tg gut um what if they lose to michigan this year go to the playoffs win the national title which is totally plausible totally well, plausible nah he's gone he's gone with one more oh he's not gone with one more loss I'm that that's my question to you. Everyone is like, if he loses the Michigan, he's done. If he's losing the Michigan, he's done. If he's losing it, okay, what if he loses the Michigan and win the title? Are you gonna fire him? Don't be so absolutist. You don't gotta be so absolutist. He would 
uh, he would have to lose four or five games, including a blowout loss to Michigan to even consider firing him. I, I, I agree with you. And, and then Mr. Here, here's, hey, here's hey, Mr. The next Rockwell, co- come join the discord server. I like what you have to say about things. <laughs> here, Discord's not the By the here, way, here, we're here's the Sloopcast. Hi, everybody. <laughs> here's the next question that for those people that's wanting Ryan Day fired, who are you going to put? Who are you going to put in replace of Ryan Day? Uh, know, there, there was a lot of talk, there was there, a lot of talks about people really loving Fickle. Fickle Fickle's in Wisconsin and and loving it right there too. Fick, Fick, he's, Fick, he's like, if he's, the mothership called, Fickle'd come home. Ah, uh, you're right. <laughs> there is only for, first off again pro Ryan Day. I am Ryan Day's biggest fan. Um, period. Right? Like it's like me and his wife in that order. I am Ryan Day's biggest fan. Um. The only, only, only guy, if someone said to me, hey, we know 100 percent we can get Mike Vrabel, that's about it that would even like interest me. Um, Other than that. Other than that. Um, Getting fired. Who who thinks that Uh, Alec, a couple people in this chat think that I disagree with them. I'm I'm. I'm I'm on I'm on your wavelength, Alec. I, I I Ryan Day's job is is safe. I'm his players all love him. I agree. I, I think he's I, hot take. Urban Meyer wouldn't last in this era of college football, which feels like a weird thing to say because he wasn't he was coaching in college football not that long ago. He would just straight up not work right or. Urban Meyer is straight up not working today's. We have no. Oh, okay. Hey, hey, Kyle, feel free just to ignore T dot there. I think he's just trolling. Um, <laughs> he's just being. Yeah, I mean, intentionally yeah, you, you, outrageous. You at, and by the way, I encourage everyone in the chat to do the same. I mean, yeah, I, I agree with that. Like, Ryan, or not Ryan Day, uh, Urban Meyer's offense. It's the running the quarterback to the ground there, and yeah, it just it just doesn't work with with the type of roster Ohio state has right now, where it's a, it's a very, very aggressive um, offense here. And you, you get a lot of other players um, chance to get the ball and do work some magic here. And, and we've seen that, especially with Ryan Hartline in the wide receiver core here. Um, Agro 83 asks, why wouldn't Meyer day work? I guess I didn't complete that thought. Thanks for keeping me um, honest. Ryan Day learned from Meyer. Yeah, he absolutely learned from Meyer. Um, why would, because I, I think as much as we're um, thankful for Urban Meyer for what he uh, elevated this program to, um, I think we all need to uh, take our Ohio State hats off maybe for just a moment and kind of acknowledge that he's not the nicest person. And, and, and I think that in many ways he led the players through fear um uh, and i think in the age of the transfer portal and in the age of nil where players are more empowered than they ever were before i i think that you would see a lot of people jumping ship from ohio state under urban meyer given the current environment um not you know, it's not totally the NFL, but you saw what happened when he tried to go in there and do his tough guy stuff in the NFL to a bunch of adult players, and they all just laughed at him and turned on him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. Ohio right. State loses two to three games this season. That would be a failure. Um, if we want to talk about, uh, we'll we'll get the season expectations later. Uh, I think maybe Kyle we we pivot into um the quarterback competition yeah absolutely we we get to see a new quarterback here after uh, cj stroud took the field for two years here and definitely a lot of question about who's going to be that who's going to be that quarterback here well i think jared and i both both agree i don't really believe there is a quarterback battle here i think the uh, the decision's already been made here and uh fully expect uh, Kyle McCord to be that starter. And I think the question should be, is there who's going to be the quarterback, but rather 
what's the expectation for Kyle McCord uh, for this year? Yeah, um, I, I think I think that's the more because I, I I have I have people I don't I, you know I know people I've been doing this for a while now I know people um, everything I've heard was that McCord was already sort of pulling away during the competition um, in the spring. It, on top of that, it was his to lose. He has extra time in the system. Uh, all due respect to Devin Brown, um, who I like and who I think will be an excellent quarterback, um, probably somewhere else, if I'm being honest, um, because I I do think Kyle McCord's going to have a good year and then come back. That is my prediction. Um, so it, to me, you're going to see Kyle McCord win this job. He was already winning the job and, and then Devin Brown got hurt. Like, can we, can we talk for a second that Devin Brown got hurt? Uh, didn't participate in the spring game. Um, I don't know. It's, 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 I, I don't see this. I, this is a competition in name only, in my opinion, this Kyle McCord's job. Yeah, agreed here. So let's time in the system is key, says Gangland. I agree. McCord going to be Haskins style distributor quarterback. Um, that's that is, I'll, that I'll, is I'll, high, high I'll, expectations. I'll take that. I'll take that. I'll, I'll 100% yeah, I, I'll take that. I definitely I definitely would as well. But look, looking at the past four quarterbacks here in their first year as quarterback, CJ Stroud, Justin Fields, Dwayne Haskins and JT Barrett average of those four. You're you're looking at probably about a 3,500 yard season, about 40 to 45 touchdowns um, in the air. If that's the expectation of Kyle McCord, that those are some really high, high numbers to try to meet. Dwayne Haskins, the the last four quarterbacks in their first year at Ohio State. That's that's the average there. Right. Um, It's high expectations, but like. And and uh, I'm going to say, what is that? Uh, I, 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 I'm I not sure how to pronounce this. Uh, I'm going to call you Hain. Hain down in the chat there. Why does no one talk about McCord and Harrison being high school teammates? Because you beat me by 30 seconds. That's why. Because you got there 30 seconds before I did. That's why. Uh, yeah, no, I think that's an excellent point. Um, they already have a relationship. Um, Kyle McCord, and uh, someone can fact check me on this, was like the 25th overall player in the uh, in his recruiting class, like a solid five star quarterback. Um, I, I want to say like in the top 30 in his class overall player, um, maybe like the second or third quarterback in his class, like. First time Jared didn't get uh, somewhere prematurely. Hey, Gangland, Gangland, you we're being professionals it. today. Yeah, we're he's being professionals he's, today, Gangland. If we're, if we're looking at if we're looking at twenty four seven, yeah, he was forty ninth nationally, eighth overall quarterback. Is that what was the? Is that the composite or is that the proper? That's the proper. There was no composite there, but what do you mean there was no composite there? I don't know. That's what 24 seven has. Either way, we're moving on, Jared. Okay, we're moving on. We're moving on, forward. Move on. <laughs> uh, the expectations are high for Kyle McCord. They're incredibly high for Kyle McCord. Uh, I'm not saying he has to be Dwayne Haskins. I know someone said that in the chat. Um, I don't think he has to be quite Dwayne Haskins no, had he... inarguably, inarguably. The best single season, I'll say arguably. Uh, arguably the best single season uh, for an Ohio state quarterback of all time. Yeah. It's, it's hard to beat that. He almost, he almost threw for 5,000 yards, 50 touchdowns in the air there. Yeah. That's, that is very, very hard to beat. Especially, especially, yeah, especially with all the weapons that um, is around uh, Kyle McCord this year. Look at I know, I know everybody looks at the wide receiver room and rightfully so how stacked Ohio State is, but 
let's not forget how stacked the running back room is. Yeah. A lot of people really forget about last year about how how state couldn't really run at times, but how state at certain points were down three, their third, their fourth running back, and then had right. to go into their fifth running back. They bring to, in linebackers to, uh, to get some carries here. And now, linebackers and out, wide receivers playing running back last year. Yeah. I mean, you had, you had, you had Xavier taking snaps as well at, at one point as well. But, but if you, if you got a healthy running back room here, it wouldn't, wouldn't it really surprise me if Kyle McCord's numbers aren't as high compared to the last four uh, quarterbacks, Ohio state, if, the running back room stays healthy. He doesn't need a. He doesn't need to throw. Uh, looking at C.J. Stroud's first year, throw for four hundred, make four hundred forty-one attempts in in his uh, first season there. Yeah, and I, I think what will be hugely beneficial, and we can talk about the defense in more detail later, but um, it will be incredibly helpful. That I think you know, I I don't think he's going to have to like take over football games. Um, especially early on. I don't think he's have to take over football games. I think the defense is going to be vastly improved. He has the best safety blanket in the entire country with Marvin Harrison. As we've already discussed, they have uh, long-standing chemistry. Um, uh, Hayne says, two biggest questions aren't McCord for me. Uh, it's the defense can be elite, and if Day can win the big game. Well, let me if for day to win the big game, I, I think you're right. But the question isn't, can he wait in the big game? It's can he fix the reason why he wasn't able to win the big game, which brings to me that my my number one with a bullet concern with this team this year is the offensive line. It is the one we can talk. The wide receivers are amazing and they're deep and the running backs are amazing and they're deep. Um, got more tight ends than we could possibly know what to do with the defensive line. We'll talk about the defense in a little bit more detail later. The defensive line is insanely deep. Um, I think the defense will be fine. Offensive line scares the living hell out of me. Um, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll talk about that here soon, but, uh, Back to Kyle McCord, though. So what, what's your expectations for Kyle McCord this year? Like what what's a realistic expectation from him that you would like to see? Like statistically? Yeah, yeah, let's let's do statistics. I, I think you could look at. I think you could look at CJ Stroud's first year as a good benchmark. Uh, CJ Stroud threw for 72%. That would be hard to, to get to. <laughs> Not uh, even Dwayne Haskins through through that um completion. Uh, but like 4,400 yards, 44 touchdowns, six interceptions, nothing much at all in the rushing game. Uh, but like uh, let's say expectations, 69% completion percentage nice uh 4400 passing yards and 44 touchdowns uh again using the cj stroud freshman year redshirt freshman year but freshman year as a as a mark um and i say that knowing that cj stroud was literally just the second overall pick in the country uh but kyle mccord i think has a better crew around him uh as far as the team as a whole, uh, the wide receivers around CJ Stroud were insane. Um, CJ Stroud probably has a better tight end in that. Um, I, you know, I'm actually starting to back off that a bit. I'm actually starting to back off that a bit. And here's why I think CJ Stroud had a better offensive line. He had equally good wide receivers. Um, but also I think CJ Stroud had to had to put up numbers sometimes because the defense was not fantastic at that point. Uh, I would like for Kyle McCord to not have to put up stupid numbers because I'd I like for the know. defense to put games away more this year. Yeah. And I, I don't really think he needs to. I think, I think, I think Kyle McCord trying 
to match what CJ Stroud his freshman year. I, I, th- I think you should look at more of like Justin Fields first year, um, about 3,300 yards, 41 touchdowns, 67% completion. I think, I think those numbers is, I think it's more realistic for Kyle McCord, just because again, if the running back crew stays healthy, yeah, he's not, he's not going to pass, he's not going to pass that much. So I, I think if he if he does the numbers that Justin Field did his freshman year, I I I, I think Austin freshman. will do well. Uh, this is yes. Yeah. Uh, I if and then again if we're comparing to like Justin Fields and C.J. Stroud, I think it's worth noting. Fields was in his second year. C.J. Stroud was in his second year. Uh, this would be McCord's third year. And I do think that's incredibly helpful, um, especially over Justin Fields in that, you know, Fields hardly had any time at Ohio State comparatively. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thirty five hundred yards and thirty five touchdowns should be the floor, says Esquire. Um, I I think that's fair. I think that's I think that's to say that that's like. Minimal expectation. I think those are good numbers, Esquire. I agree. Mm-hmm. All right. I, th- I think this is a uh, a good point here. I know there was a lot of questions here talking about the defense, defensive sides, the safeties, and offensive lines. So I think, I think uh, we you should want to switch the graphic over to the. Oh, you were already course, doing Jerry. it. Jeez. I should already have doing you. it. I should have trusted you. I'm sorry. Yeah. Let's let's talk about the expectations for Ohio State. I mean. It goes without saying the expectation is every year Ohio State it's win a national title. But let's let's look deeper into that though. And what what can we expect in in this season? And what what are you looking for in this season here? I know I know Jared has always been a big person in looking at the trenches, especially yeah. the offensive line this year, which is and I agree with Jared, it's probably the biggest concern leading into the season is that offensive line. Like what's we, we don't have a definitive who those starting five are. Now we have a we have a really good uh, guess and who who it's really going to be here, but it's not been announced. Yeah, that's, Much like Kyle McCord, it hasn't been announced, but I feel pretty confident in saying who I think the starting five are. Um I think I do think Josh Fryer will be the left tackle. I do think that Josh Simmons, the San Diego State transfer, will be the right tackle. Uh, do Matt Jones will be the right guard. Donovan Jackson will be the left guard. Uh, you can have a bit of maybe a bit of a controversy, a bit of a position battle at the center position. Um, I, you know, you, it could be Carson Hinsman. It could be Jacob James. I'm personally going to go with Hinsman, but I, I wouldn't be shocked if the more senior, uh, if the more senior James wins it. Who do you yeah, predict will be the tackles? Uh, Josh Fryer at left and Josh Simmons, the San Diego State transfer at right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and this is... I mean, the, the, the Ohio State's got to figure this out here because with all the talent that they have, with the wide receivers, tight ends, running back, without without a solid offensive line, it doesn't, it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean anything if you can't... doesn't do matter... That. If you got if you got the defensive side come in past the line of scrimmage and get in the backfield, this is my this is my analogy for this. Doesn't matter how good the driver is. Doesn't matter how many horses are underneath the hood. If you don't have good tires, you're not gonna go anywhere. Mm-hmm. Your offensive line or your tires, they're your road graders. I don't care how good Kyle McCord is or isn't. I don't care how healthy Travion Henderson and Evan Pryor are or aren't. Uh, I don't care how amazing Marvin Harrison is, even though we all know he's literally the best player in the country. None of that matters if the offensive line is garbage. And for the record, I don't think it'll be garbage. I do think Mm -hmm. it'll struggle early in the season. And th- and that's why it's good that Ohio State doesn't play Notre Dame week one or two. It's week four. To that that to is helpful. Some of that is very helpful. I know there was some that angst in the helpful. chat about about that. 
Uh, it, it is very helpful that it's early. But um, yeah, it looked like uh, uh, Zach asked, uh, how, how will we be effective against Notre Dame in week four? And is it good we get to warm up before that game? Well, there you go. Yes. Yeah, we just, just answered that last part. But how effective will we be here? Yeah, it, it's definitely going to be a battle. I mean, you're you're on the road um, over at Notre Dame. There, it's going to be a hostile environment. I, I yeah, it's good. It's going to be a battle. But I think I think right, I trust Ryan Day and that he'll get his he'll get the team ready and um, get get the work get the job done. These are the, the good back to back comments here. Esquire says, if I recall correctly. 2014 started with a pretty questionable O-line and they figured it out. Then Gangland says, I hope there's not a Virginia Tech slip up. Hey, I'll take a Virginia Tech slip up. If 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 if, if it ends in the same way, I'll take it. Listen, if Notre Dame, and by the way, Notre Dame 2023 is monumentally better than Virginia Tech 2014. Um just let's 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 say that right off the top. But if losing to Notre Dame is a galvanizing moment that brings the team together and yada, 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 uh, low point in the script, got to save the cat, uh, 60 minute mark being the no turning point, losing to Notre Dame. I'll take it. If that's what it takes, I'll take it. I, I'm not sure. Listen, I want to win a national title and I want to beat Michigan. If losing to Notre Dame happens along that way, I don't care. I almost cussed. I'm being <laughs> professional today. <laughs> yeah, let, let's play uh, devil's advocate here. How state how state loses a close one in Notre Dame? Let, let's just say hypothetically here. In the grand scheme of things, it doesn't really mean a lot as a season as a whole because you, you can still win out, win the Big Ten and play play in the playoffs still but but yeah it's I don't, I don't think i don't think it means as much but i mean if you're if you're dominant if you're dominant in that game or you lose um significantly then then that's a big deal though is notre dame still homeless in terms of conferences for now for now for now uh, uh night at wisconsin from buckeye square night at wisconsin is my concern for the potential slip up game it, it's yeah, we, we, Jared, and I, Jared and I have always said this for for as long as we've been uh, since Iowa and podcast, Purdue. Since we've been doing our podcast here, playing a night game. Well, I don't know. I don't know if Wisconsin's in a night game, but <laughs> let's just say it is. And playing a night game in the uh, Big Ten West is always concerning. But but then again, that, that that was under Urban Meyer. I mean, have we have we had any really slip ups under? under Ryan Day in the big in the um in the West division? No, we have it. Say what you want to say about Ryan Day. How many winnable games has he lost since taking over as the head coach? I mean, not not winnable. Winnable is the wrong word to use there. How many expected games? How many games? You know, I'm talking like Urban Meyer lost to Virginia Tech. Urban Meyer lost to Purdue. Urban Meyer lost to Iowa. Have we seen Ryan Day drop a game that they absolutely should have won? There's one there's one game that I can think of, Jared, and that was uh, two years ago, if you remember, in in Columbus. Oregon? Late eight. Mm-hmm. It's still, it's still I, I think, Oregon. They, I, th I think they should have won. I think they should have won. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're they, the better team. They should have won, but still, it was Oregon. 2019 Clemson. No, but those, those, those are good football teams. That's not the point. I'm talking about losing to Toledo or Virginia Tech, who, uh, or you know, Appy State, losing a game like that. Wisconsin is a night game. Uh, how late in the year is that? Is that October? like late October or early October. I forget. It is. I think it's late October. I have to. Yeah, that's, that, that, that's concerning. I don't. It'll by that time, it'll be nice and dark 
Um, the yeah, October twenty eighth. Yep. Would you rather have urban resume of losing easy games on the on uh, games or the day of uh, not beating big teams? Urban Meyer also lost to big teams. I mean, they scored failed forget, to score forget, any points against forget. Clemson. Yeah, he didn't score. Yeah, zero and thirty on the first time play Clemson. Yeah, well, second time, but first time in the playoffs. Uh, yeah, it's not, it's not an either or. Unfortunately, um, mm -hmm. and it, to me, it's just it's frustrating when you lose a game that you absolutely should win. Yeah, no, to it, Ryan it, Day's it credit, is. he's only lost games to teams with relatively equal talent. Relatively equal talent is the or the only games he lost. Again, Fair to enough. Kyle's point, the. If you want to stretch that a bit, you could maybe say Oregon. Um, because I do it's so, or, it's so Oregon, Oregon losses still looks better than Purdue or Virginia some of the Tech other losses. Or, yeah. Or or even Michigan State that don't know why we did was, we haven't been didn't was, hand the ball off more good. often, but let, that, that was Tim Beck. That. that was Tim Beck's fault. I'm putting I'm still putting that 100 percent on Tim Beck. I'm giving Urban Meyer. Well, Urban Meyer hired Tim Beck, so maybe I'm not giving yes. Urban Meyer a pass on that. Yeah. All right. I know there was a lot of I know there was a lot of questions here about the defense. Yeah. Defense. Thought he lost uh, to Purdue. Urban Meyer lost to Purdue. Urban did. Yeah. We're not right. we're defense, talking about Ryan Day. Yeah. The defense here though, Jared. Uh a lot of Maybe maybe a lot of expectation last year with uh, with Knowles coming in and completely redoing the defense and everything is going to yeah. be fixed and I, he fixed a lot of things. No, is it perfect? No, you're not going to you're not going to come in and fix all the things that was wrong with the defense in one year. Made great great uh, changes, yeah. and I think we'll continue seeing a, a good improvement in this defense here. Uh, the defensive line, solid, solid. One of, one of the deepest uh, defensive line group that we've seen at Ohio State here. Uh, it's, yeah, it's, I think it's going to be a lot of fun watching this deep. defensive line uh, just feast on uh, throughout the season. Yeah, it's, it's, if we're talking specifically the two deep, one of the deepest Ohio State defensive lines we've ever seen. Uh, definitely in the conversation. Love the shirt, Jared. Thank you, Zach. Um, this may or may not be uh, available at merch.thesloopcast.com. I don't remember if Ohio State uh, falsely copyright claimed this or not. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. JT Tuimo allow, um, and then behind him is Caden Curry. Caden Curry would be Oregon losses on Kerry Combs. You're not wrong. But once again, just like with uh, Tim Beck, they hired carry comes so uh behind to emo allow you have caden curry who would be starting at 10 11 12 big 10 schools uh caden curry's great he's a true sophomore yeah um i don't even know if they'll get to use him much this year you have tyleek nice. williams and ty and uh transfer from Ole Miss Tywin Malone at the three tech defensive tackle. Um, Tyleek Williams has shown explosiveness at times. He's been disruptive at times. Uh, I think what we need to see from Tywin Malone as a junior is consistency. Um, yep. He's lost some weight. They say he's in better shape. You know, this has been like his big mature year as far as like maturing into an adult and yada, 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 and doing all the little things right. And, you know, you, all those familiar storylines that typically lead to uh, improved play. So, yeah, Ty Leak has always been explosive and he's always shown greatness. Can he get over the hump and be consistent i think is the big thing there mike hall yep. is um by many people's uh assumption by many people's analysis a potential top 15 pick in the nfl draft 
in 2024. Uh, he, he was backed up at nose tackle by Ty Hamilton, who is an absolutely solid, solid nose tackle. Um, he's not going to be as disruptive as my call. He's not going to be as my call just needs to stay healthy. I mean, that's yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, he's not as going to be as disruptive as my call. He's not going to be as involved in like the pass rush as my call, but Ty it's Hamilton a, is still an incredibly solid player who is going to eat up blocks in the run game and in the pass game. Mm -hmm. And, you yep. know, that's what you need out of that player um, at the weak side defensive end. You have uh, Jack Sawyer, who's going to be solidly at defensive end again no more standing up no more jack position no more like he's he's gonna yes. be a defensive end this year and i think that's a good call and you yeah, have and i think, two... I think we'll, yeah we'll, we'll, we'll see a lot more action we'll see a lot more i guess stats from from jack sawyer this year he was very disruptive last year but you look at his stats it didn't really back it up but he definitely was and i think with him being down um on the ground there we'll, we'll see we'll see him convert some of those um disruptives into actual sacks and tackle for losses and all that yeah so the linebacker the linebackers well, though jared real quick Kyle, behind him i think you have a decent position battle to see who is going to get um more snaps at the weak side defensive end in in you know for when jack sawyer leaves the field uh kenyatta jackson and amari abor uh, two incredibly talented defensive ends. It'll be interesting to see, you know, who's the first onto the field in relief of Jack Sawyer. Okay. All right. All right. Um, so I, th I think the rest of the defense here, uh, the, I think, I think the only question would be the safeties here, but you, you get another year under Knowles and it's going to, I think we'll see a drastic improvement in this defense here. So I don't, I don't have any I don't have any hesitations or any concerns here. So, yeah, I've never felt this confident going. Well, not never, but it's been a few years since I felt this good about the linebackers going into the season. Kyle, I am getting a wrap up signal. Um, so cornerbacks, I feel great about the cornerbacks. You have um, Denzel Burke, who had a great second half of the year last year, struggling early on. You add uh, David Igbenosa, a redshirt freshman transfer, um, or excuse me, no, true sophomore uh, from Ole Miss. Uh, safeties are a bit of a mess. There's a lot of good players. I don't know who's playing where and how. So yeah. uh, that's the most up in the air, but they have tons of talent. So I'm not really that worried about it. It's just sort of what, what pieces are they putting in the puzzle there? Um, Kyle, uh, I, I think now would be a good time to uh, let everyone know who we are. Um, I think the defense is going to be elite top 10 in the country. Yeah, they I mean, will need to stay healthy in certain spots to to achieve that because they're not super deep everywhere on the defense. Um, yeah. But if they stay healthy, I agree. All right. Uh, right, Kyle, is, you can. We're we're the Sloopcast. Yeah, if, yeah, we're the Sloopcast. Check us out on on the social medias. Just search for at Sloopcast. You'll find us there. It's, uh, it is, screw social media. Join the Discord server, discord.thesloopcast.com. Yeah. Yep. Uh, thanks everyone for joining, and um, yeah, excited for the season to come. Yeah, thank you ever, uh, very much, everybody. Uh, this is normally where I'd introduce some ending music for the show, but uh, I don't think we're going to do that on the Bleacher Report yeah. app. Um, again, find us on YouTube. We're part of Buckeye Huddle, so you can find us on the Buckeye Huddle YouTube channel. Uh, you can find us on our own YouTube channel, uh, just at Sloopcast. Um, I've abandoned Twitter, so don't. you can find me on there, but don't. Uh, just join the Discord server. Uh, come hang out with us. We're uh, a, a fun-loving group of Buckeye fans willing to talk some smack uh, all year round. Actually, it's not. It's not just a. It's not just an on-season thing. So, um, with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support local podcasters. Peace out, everybody. Hey, everybody. Uh, Jared here. Uh, back with you. 
Uh, I told you I'd be back at the end of the episode. So I uh, want to do some quick recruiting updates. Um, a couple couple uh, recruiting items happened. Um, and not that they wanted us to talk about recruiting in the Bleacher Report stream. As as you can tell, we kept that very casual. Um, but the uh, couple recruiting updates uh, since that episode was recorded. Um, the biggest, the absolute biggest being that Aaron Scott chooses Ohio State over Michigan. Oregon was also on the table, but we, we all know it was between Ohio State and Michigan. Uh, I think Kyle and I have... Um, not wavered in our confidence that we felt like uh, we, we felt like Aaron Scott was going to come to Ohio state. Um, we never, we've been doing a mock class uh, every month for the past several months. And Aaron Scott was in every single one of them. As you know, I, I think we sort of stuck fast on that. And it's not to say that I don't think it was, a real conversation to have. It absolutely was. He was legitimately um, entertaining, thinking about considering going to Michigan. I'm not suggesting otherwise, but uh, we we always sort of stayed very confident in the fact that we felt like he was coming to Ohio State. So the second big uh, item in regards to uh, recruiting news uh, would be that Ohio State received a commitment from Chris Henry Jr. Uh, if you might remember that his, his dad was a wide receiver whose uh, life ended too early um, for the Cincinnati Bengals. He is class of 2026. So if you're wondering why, Jared, you've never really talked about Chris Henry's son potentially committing to Ohio State class of 2026. This is our first mention of the class of 2026 on the Sloopcast. So um, I am not surprised that he ends up choosing Ohio state. I kind of had that somewhere in the back of my head somewhere, but uh, I think everybody is probably pretty surprised about the timing of it. I don't think anyone saw it happening this early. Um, you know, I think some people see a, a, a commitment that early and they just, they kind of start to think like, Oh, well, surely he won't stay committed that entire time. But like grew up in Ohio, wants to play in Ohio. He's in Ohio. He just, it feels like a, Hey, I just want to play for Ohio state and be done with it. You know, I don't want to do the recruiting thing and yada, yada, yada. Makes a lot of sense. I, I think, I don't think, you know, it's obviously a long, long time before his initial signing day, but I feel pretty confident that we don't have to worry about Chris Henry in that regard. Um, the third big recruiting item would be that Ohio state received a commitment uh, for punter. That's right. A punter. Um, his name is Joe McGuire. He is from the kick Australia, the pro kick Australia Academy, uh, who has put a lot of punters into both college football and the NFL uh, in recent years, uh, including several Ohio state players. So obviously, um, you know, no, no, you know, we're we're a long way removed from the Jim Tressel era at this point. I don't know if anyone's getting like excited about punters necessarily, but you know, bring another Aussie in, right? You need a punter. Uh, you know, you you can't beat equal teams without a good punter. Uh, not not most of the time anyway. So obviously an important pickup. And I lied. There's actually a fourth big recruiting item. Um. Ohio State had uh, two players committed in the 2025 class. Um, a defensive back named Jonte Gilbert was one of them. He is decommitted. Um, I'm just going to be real with everybody. I don't really know enough about Gilbert um, or the 2025 class and where Ohio State sits with a bunch of different safeties and corners and all that at this point to know if if I should be upset by this or not like I I'm just I'm still sort of fo I'm focused on the season coming up and I'm focused on the 2020 you know wrapping up the 2024 class I just I don't have a strong opinion um Gilbert uh, an incredibly highly rated player um so it's obviously not a good thing that he decommits but I'm just not I am not in a place yet where I 
I'm not in a place yet where I feel like this is some sort of horrible news. Um, and then again, that's no disrespect to Gilbert. He's a very highly rated player, um, but it's just, you know, when the out of state kids commit this early, you always kind of have to keep it in the back of your head that it's always a bit tenuous. And that, that's where we're at right now. So speaking of finishing up the 2025 class, um, excuse me, the 2024 class, a couple just quick notes now that Adam Scott uh, has officially joined the class. One, and this, these are in order. How, how Ohio State needs to finish this class for it to be, in my mind, a truly successful recruiting class one they need to bring in another like preferably true offensive tackle type player into this in, in into this roster uh a true offensive tackle and you know we we talked in our if you want us to talk about like a bunch of different options who they might have at that. We did a, uh, the episode the name of that episode was new mock plus just a couple of weeks ago. You know, listen to us talk about it in detail there, uh, who, you know, potentially that could be, but they need another true offensive tackle into, uh, this recruiting class. Um, they are in really good position at defensive end with Houston and Dylan Stewart, uh, Edric Houston and Dylan Stewart. They need to, at the very least, f finish the job with one of them. Um, I, I feel I feel like Edric Houston feel pretty solid there. Dylan Stewart is uh, I wouldn't I feel confident, but not as confident. If that makes sense, um, you absolutely have to bring Houston in. And if you don't bring in Stewart, you need to bring in someone else of you know near caliber. There aren't a lot of defensive ends um, at Stewart's caliber, but you have to. You, you need to bring in Houston plus like a real pass rush edge rush defensive end type like Dylan Stewart, preferably Dylan Stewart. I don't think the class is going to fall apart to be a failure if you don't get Stewart in this class. But if not him, someone like him. Uh, number three. They need to get a second top shelf safety. Need to get a second top shelf safety. Um you know, we are all hoping we are all wanting that um, to be KJ Bolden. He's who commits August 5th. So uh, we, we should have an answer on, on that fairly soon. I don't feel great about that. I, I do. I am still leaning Georgia uh, as far as my opinion for KJ Bolden, although I don't think Ohio State's out of it for the record. Uh, but, but I am still leaning Georgia there. So if not Bolden, then, you know, Peyton Woodyard is still out there. Zaquan Patterson is still out there. Get one of those three players, preferably Bolden, but get one of those three players. And I think we're on our way to shoring up this class. Uh, the, the last item, they need to get a second solid defensive tackle. Uh, they need a second solid defensive tackle. There's a bunch of different guys who that could be. Um, you could look at like uh, Ernest Wilner, Jun uh, Willer Jr. Um, Dominic McKinley, Aiden Breland. Uh, there's a couple other guys out there. Um, Nigel Smith. Need a second defensive tackle of, of uh, a second high quality defensive tackle. And I, I think anything past those items, I think anything else is, is icing. Um, you know, we're still really hoping that Ohio state can add like Kobe black to the cornerback class. You know, you're 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 hitting for a home run with Kobe Black and maybe you get him and maybe you don't. The Obviously, you want them. Obviously, you want them. But the, the recruiting class doesn't become some sort of huge failure without him. Um, same thing with Jeremiah McClellan, uh, wide receiver. Felt like he was like in Ohio State's pocket for a minute. Now we're not quite as sure. You know, 
does Ohio State end up only taking two wide receivers if McClellan goes somewhere else? I don't think so. I think the floor there is three. So where else could they go to get a wide receiver? I'm not 100% sure on any of that yet. But given the wide receiver talent already on the team and with Mylon Graham and Jeremiah Smith already in the class, again, I don't think like the success or failure of the recruiting class hinges purely on whether Jeremiah, Jeremiah McClellan commits or not. Right. So obviously you want Jeremiah McClellan. You, you want to win that battle. Absolutely want him. But, you know, frosting on the cake at that point. Um, you know, they, they probably need a third linebacker not getting KVA stinks, but again, it's not like a make or break the class situation. So that that's my thoughts on that. Um, I think that's really all my thoughts. I think I'm going to go ahead and, um, finish this episode out. Uh, let me grab a band real quick. I was not thinking ahead as I typically don't do. Um, so uh, tonight's ending music, we're going to kick it off to the Floor Walkers. Um, Floor Walkers are a Columbus based band. The name of this song is called So Strong. So once again, that is the Floor Walkers. The name of this song is So Strong. So with all of that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, these are the Floor Walkers.